please welcome to the stage the wonderful Mr. Stevie Gray! Yeah. Yeah. Edinburgh say yeah. yeah! Now this is Freddie, say hello! Uh, this is Freddie's first time on stage, say hello Freddie! <laughs> Very good! <laughs> months, three weeks. Well, I'm surprised he's still alive because that's seven months and two weeks longer than I ever managed to keep a Tamagotchi alive. <laughs> what was brilliant is I realised that when my wife was pregnant, the only time I'd ever held a child was when I worked in IT and people brought babies into the office. And I remember the last time that this happened, an email went out to the entire company and the email said, ladies and gentlemen, we need to make you all aware, Tanya's coming in today and she's bringing the baby, but the baby's got a condition where it grows excessive hair on its face. Do not mention the hair. I worked with a lad from Bolton called Phil, and Phil hated it when people brought babies into the office. I remember this Phil saying, I don't know why people bring the babies in the office. Last year I had my appendix out, didn't bring that in. <laughs> comes in at 11 o'clock brandishing what I can only describe as a baby wolf. <laughs> she comes in and everyone was being really nice to her. I remember I said to her, Tanya, how's motherhood? She says, yeah, I love it. Another person said, Tanya, what are you going to do for the rest of the day? She said, oh, I'm going to go around all the different cafes, meet the other mums. And then this Phil from Bolton goes, are you getting much sleep? <laughs> She went, no actually, we're not getting much at all. He went, I bet you're not. I bet he's up all night fucking howling at the moon. <laughs> <laughs> to get me used to having a baby and the birth and all of that, we signed up to these things called the NCT classes, the antenatal classes, which teach you about all of this. Now, I've now moved to a village in between Derby and Nottingham called Breeston. Anybody heard of it? Yes. Yeah, gorgeous little village, posh little village. It's that posh, if there's a fire, the fire brigade put it out using Evian. That's how it <laughs> Seriously, I'm from Oldham. I'm from a place where people eat chocolate cakes for the vitamin C content. <laughs> So whenever we do anything, we have, we have a decision to make. Do we go to Derby or do we go to Nottingham? And then we decided that we were going to give birth at Derby Hospital, but the best NCT classes for us was in Nottingham. So we signed up to these and we got there and it was such a mistake because everybody there, they were all hipsters. They all had massive beards. <laughs> Seriously, all the men had big beards. They looked like grown-up versions of Tanya's baby. <laughs> I thought, you know what, I don't think I get on with these people because what they did, they took all the fathers to be in one room and they said, fathers to be, when your partner goes into labour, what are you going to pack in your overnight bag? And the best that these fathers from Nottingham could come up with was four cans of real ale and a bag of organic coffee. I was like, who would take that? These are such idiots. And then it dawned on me one day, I was the idiot because week two we turned up. And on the table in front of everybody was a small bowl of olive oil. And the lady taking the course said, Okay, ladies and gentlemen, today I'm going to teach you how to massage the perineum. Does anybody know where the perineum is? Now, I didn't know this. The only time I've heard that word used, last year I was lucky enough, I was asked could I be the opening act for a comedian called Gary Delaney. Hey. And I absolutely love Gary Delaney. I think he's the best Joe writer. He's from the Midlands. I think he's the best Joe writer possibly in the world. Be definitely the best of my generation. And these four nights I supported him, he said this joke, and I laughed even though I didn't get it. It was, <laughs> the area in a Nando's between the front door and the back door is called the peri perineum. <laughs> Which is an amazing joke. But when this person at NCT said, does anybody know where the perineum is? I put my hand up and went, yeah, it's in Nando's. <laughs> So they all thought I was a dickhead. Perineum, I didn't even know it had a name, especially not a Latin one. I mean, I've licked it, but I don't know where it is. <laughs> and olive oil, anything that has touched that part of the body cannot be described as extra virgin. <laughs> don't know what you said. I won't have it in the house now. Don't like the smell, don't like the taste. <laughs> but no matter what they told us on that course, it could not have prepared us for the actual birth itself, because the birth itself, oh God, I think I need therapy for it. I will never forget the day that my child was born, and that's primarily because it was on the same night as the finale of series one of Killing Eve. You know, do we have any fans of Killing Eve in? Yeah. yeah, it's brilliant, isn't it? So what happened is Killing Eve started about six weeks before my wife's due date 
And we started watching Killing Eve. And as the week's gone on, my wife got bigger, Killing Eve got better. And we're like, oh my God, you know, it's going to be really close to the finale. And we started having jokes saying, if we have a girl, we're going to call it Villanelle or something. <laughs> and then on the night of the finale, we'd been waiting for it for, for weeks. We were so excited about it. But my wife kept getting this pain in her back. So we kept ringing the hospital. And we got through to Derby Hospital. And we got through to a midwife called Deirdre. And we rang them four times. Now, Deirdre had a catchphrase. She said, Mr. Gray, it's a pain in the back. That's not labour. You'd know if it's labour. And on the fourth time, I said, Deirdre, Deirdre, we're about to watch Killing Eve. My wife's still got the pain in her back. She's like, Mr. Gray, that's not labour. You'd know if it's labour. But I love Killing Eve as well. It's amazing, isn't it? Tell your wife to have two paracetamols. If nothing changes, ring us in the morning. I went, OK, Deirdre, but I'm about to put Killing Eve on. Don't want to miss this. She went, you won't miss it, because it's not labour, because you'd know if it's labour. I was like, but you promised me we'll get to see the end of Killing Eve. She went, I promise you, right? We start Killing Eve, seriously, we get two minutes in, I give my wife the paracetamol, two minutes in, and my wife gets pain in the back, my wife's like, oh, for fuck's sake, oh, I'm in the hospital. I was like, I've already rang them four times. Right? She's like, really, we're going to rang the hospital, got through to Deirdre again. I was like, Deirdre, I'm about to post Killing Eve, I'm not happy. She's like, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Gray, did you give her the paracetamol? I said, I did give her the paracetamol. I said, what can I do, Deirdre? She went, well, it's a pain in the back. That's not labour. You know if it's labour. I'm like, what can I do, Deirdre? She says, why don't you run your wife a hot bath? I was like, what? I was like, okay, Deirdre. I'll go upstairs, run my wife a hot bath. Go downstairs, get my wife, put my wife in the bath. Come downstairs, put Killing Eve on seriously. Then there's a shriek from upstairs. Now, my wife barely ever makes a noise. So I was like, oh my God, she's shrieking. I run upstairs, my wife is in the bath and she's got like this ball hanging out of her. Oh my God, but I ring the hospital. I say a line I thought I'd never say in my life. Oh wait, I got through to Deirdre again. I'm like, Deirdre, you need to send an ambulance as a matter of urgency. My wife has got a balloon protruding from her vagina. This Deirdre goes, that sounds like labor. I said, I think it is labor. I think it is. Send an ambulance, send an ambulance. She went, Mr. Gray, I will send an ambulance, but I need you to listen very carefully as I'm now going to give you all the instructions you need to deliver your baby. <laughs> I struggled to parallel park. <laughs> I was like, go on, she went, right, have you got any clean towels? I said, yes, she went, go and get the clean towels and place them on a flat surface. I can hear a voice from outside going, not the Egyptian cotton ones! <laughs> I get these clean towels, I put them on a flat surface, I went, dear, right, I've done that, what can I do now? She said, right, go and get your wife out of the bath, but be really careful not to pop that balloon. It's actually your wife's waters. If you pop that, it's game over. So I get my wife, and I put her down on the flat surface, I went, right, I've got my wife, she's on the flat surface on the clean towels. I said, what can I do now? Deirdre goes, we need you to go and get a shoelace and a safety pin. I thought, what the fuck is this? Challenge Annika? <laughs> <laughs> I went running around the house, I found a shoelace. I couldn't find a safety pin. All I could find was a pin badge that said, happy birthday, granddad. <laughs> I go running upstairs. I say, right, I've got a shoelace and I've got a safety pin of sorts. What can I do now, Deirdre? She says, Mr. Gray, the paramedics have been in touch. They're downstairs. Go and let them in. I go running downstairs. I open the door. It's a male and female paramedic. I say, my wife's at the top of the stairs on the floor. The male and female paramedic comes running up the stairs. The male paramedic takes one look at my wife lying on the floor with this balloon hanging out of her. And he goes, ooh, I think I'll drive. <laughs> He runs back down the stairs. He leaves me upstairs with me and the female paramedic. The female paramedic says, Mr. Gray, what I need you to do now, go and find a pair of your wife's pants, your wife's knickers. They need to be strong enough to support this balloon, but not sharp enough to pop it. And I'm there, and I'm going through my wife's knicker drawer. Everything I pull out seems to be a thong. I kind of glimpse at myself in the mirror. I thought, who the fuck am I? Got one! <laughs> like Bridget Jones style pants and I said what about these these should do my wife who hadn't said a word in 10 minutes went I am not going to hospital in a pair of spanks <laughs> got a pair of football shorts on we get in the ambulance the ambulance starts going I go in my overnight bag the female paramedic says Mr. Gray what do you think you're doing I says I'm gonna massage the perineum <laughs> I said, I want have olive oil in the house. I can't stand the smell, can't stand the taste. She went, it's a bit light for that anyway. It's crowning. I went, what? She went, I can see the head. It's crowning. She shouts to the driver, Gabe, you're going to have to hurry up. I can see the head. I start panicking. I take the gas in there off myself. <laughs> it's Dave that's driving. He goes, you're not going to believe this. We're from the Nottingham branch of the ambulance service. You're going to Derby Hospital. And there's all roadworks on the A52. Do you know the way to the hospital? And I'm there. And in the back of the ambulance, and there's a hole this big in the back of the ambulance. And I'm trying to direct an ambulance to Derby Hospital through a hole this big. I've got my face pushed right
right up against the hole, but my face is way too big for the hole. I realise that behind me, Freddy is in exactly the same position. <laughs> <laughs> We get to Derby Hospital, the ambulance pulls up, the midwives come running out, they open the door of the ambulance, they clock me, they go, oh, are you Mr. Balloon Vagina? I've got a nickname at this point. They put my wife on a stretcher and go running into the hospital. I'm trying to catch him, but I've got one shoelace missing. A lady opens the door and she goes, come on, Grandad, you don't want to miss this. Not on your birthday. I'm still wearing the fucking badge at this point. <laughs> we get in there, they put my wife on the bed, there's a beep, the head midwife goes, there's a beep, there's a beep, what's that beep? I realise it's me and I'm not fed my Tamagotchi that day. <laughs> and within three minutes, we gave birth to this gorgeous lad. And it was probably the best moment of my life. And about an hour later, right, I was lying on the bed, and my son was asleep in my arms, and my wife was next to me. And I was like, oh my god, he is so gorgeous. I'm so happy that he's less hairy than Tanya's baby. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was a knock at the door, and this woman sticks her head around and she goes, Aya. I'm Deirdre. I said, Deirdre, I told you it was labour. She went, I know, I'm so sorry, Mr. Gray, I'm so sorry. She went, anyway, I've got a peace offering. I went, what is it? And she brought a laptop in, and all four of us watched the end of Killing Eve. <laughs> and Miss Deirdre says, oh, Mr. Gray, wouldn't it be brilliant if you had a glass of champagne now? I went, I don't need it, Deirdre. I went in my overnight bag. I had four cans of real ale and a bag of organic coffee. <laughs> Stage and he's absolutely loved it. I've been Stevie Gray and this has been Freddie Gray. I want to see you at the show tonight.